Chris, let's go ahead and jump into the previews for NFL week number four. Thursday night is about the biggest dud of a matchup that you could possibly have. We we have had exciting games. You know, we had the battle for Florida. We had the battle for Ohio. We You know, and then the first week it was Kansas City and the Texans, who we thought were going to be all right, but you at least had Watson against Mahomes, things like that. Uh, you've got a beat-up-ass Denver team going to the Jets, who are less than worthless. Um, and, and, of course, this is a pick em at this point. I am uh, <laughs> Matt said Thursday is the presidential debate part two. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it could it, it could very be. well be just as big of a shit show as last night. It, sure, it, it could be two old men yelling at each other. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, you got uh, you got thoughts about this because uh, you know it, it is the uh, national I have, game. I have, I have no thoughts outside of the fact that I this this might. <sighs> So I'm an NFL truther. You know that. Yeah. If there's a game on, I've never not watched it. Okay. There, there's never been a situation. I have a, a family member that's a, a pretty distant family member. Um, stepsister's daughter. Don't know what that makes it to me. Um, is is having a surprise birthday. I, I'm not giving anything away because nobody in my family has ever listened to this show in my life. Um, <laughs> we're, we're so glad to have the support. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know what I would do if people actually supported me. Um, oh, I, got it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm thinking about going to the surprise party. <laughs> That's not a terrible idea. I don't think you're going to be missing anything. Well, I, mean, I know I'm not going to. Here's the thing. I am going to miss something. Something incredibly laughable is going to happen in oh, this game. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm going to regret not seeing it live and having an opinion on it immediately. And, and that's where... It's where I'm struggling. I love this league. I support this league. It's got its problems. It's got its flaws. But but this is this is the best this is the best sport league in the world. Okay, there's a reason that every year you have at least one team go from worst to first in the division. There's a reason that 16 teams make the playoffs, half of the league, and every year eight of those 16, half of the playoff teams turn over. That that doesn't happen in any other sport. Outside of the Patriots, not one other team has made it to two Super Bowls in 20 years. Okay. That it just doesn't happen. I I, I love everything about this sport. I like supporting it. I, I don't know how much of this game I can watch. Uh Matt jumped in and said, watch this be the game that both teams score 70 points, four safeties, two kickoff returns, a hook and ladder touchdown, and Andrew Luck comes out of retirement. <laughs> they, they both need Andrew Luck in maybe the worst possible way. I, I don't know um, that Andrew Luck could save the Jets. Um, no, I think the Jets have way more issues than just that. I, think, I agree. I think there are major, major problems there, but, uh, you know, Birdie said, we bet the Jets' money line before it moved. We got it at plus 130. Um, I don't know what the money line is right now. I I'm going to bet, bet it's close to minus 110 both ways. Yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's 110. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's minus. Well, Heritage got it 105. Bet 105. Line, 105. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's – yeah. I, uh, I'll i go ahead and tell you this. That since we're, we're doing picks on every game, I got the Jets in this one because I want Adam Gase to win – so that no. you can get yeah. Dan Quinn fired I know, first. I need, I swear to God, the Jets lose this game in a disastrous way, and Adam Gase gets fired, and then we have to wait until Monday night for the Falcons to lose and Dan Quinn to get fired. I'm going to be furious. I'm going <laughs> to be furious that it's a scheduling snafu that takes me out and not the, the most deserving person loses taking me out. Yeah. Uh, for I anybody, can handle being a loser. I've lose. I lose a lot. That's fine. If you're gonna play this game, you got to be okay with losing. I I don't like the idea that I I lose only because one game was played three days before the other. Yes, I agree. I agree. I um, I, for anybody that is listening or watching the show that hasn't kept up with us for a long time, back in the off season, Chris got a ticket at plus one thousand for Dan Quinn to be fired first. 
So before Matt my Patricia, logic was solid, my logic was great. Yes. I thought the Lions were going to be too good for for Patricia to get fired. The win uh, last week really, really helped that he is not getting fired before these other bastards. I thought Adam Gase was too close to the GM since he made the GM there, and I thought they're probably going to fire him, but maybe not till the end of the year. And I just thought if there was anybody that was close to getting fired last year and pulled himself out of the depths of hell, it was, it was, um, uh, Quinn. And I thought, I don't think this team's any better this year. I kind of think they're worse. And, and so I, I love the odds there. I, I thought this, this guy's the guy getting canned. They're going to start off terrible again and he's not making it past week four. I can't believe after the Dallas debacle, he made it out of that game out of week two. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You're and then last right. week against the Bears, to let the Bears come back from down two scores, oh, just disaster, just disaster, at at home. I mean, that's even even worse, even worse. Uh, Joseph Gomez said parody in the other divisions, but when you get to play the Jets, Giants, and Washington twice every year, it helps. Uh, Birdie said we. Uh, oh no, he said yeah, minus one ten. And Damian Estrada said God couldn't even help the Jets. <laughs> like it's probably true, probably true. Moving on, let's move to Sunday, and we are going to move into the Colts at the Bears. Talking about those same Bears, 3-0, and the Colts, 2-1, and have looked significantly better since the opening loss to the Jaguars. Uh, Phillip Rivers seems to be moving along just fine. That defense is tops in the NFL as far as efficiency and everything else goes. I mean, they are really playing well. Now, it helps that they have played some absolute crap teams, but... I mean, efficiency, uh, efficiency numbers are efficiency numbers. Joseph said, uh, the Johnson family is pretty cheap. Don't be surprised if Gase uh, stays for a little while longer. Eh, maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, the Bears have moved on to Nick Foles. It might be the end of the road for Mitchell Trubisky at, uh, at Chicago. I kind of like the Bears in this spot. Everybody loves the Colts, right? And their defense has played outstanding. I, I kind of like the Bears. I'm going to roll with the Bears in this one. They're playing at home. I, again, doesn't make a humongous difference, but I, I'm going to keep saying it because they are at home. But I I like them more so than the Colts right now. I think the Colts and, and all of their efficiency numbers and whatnot have to do with the schedule. And while Chicago hasn't exactly played the best of the best, I do think that they will be able to throw on this team. I do think this team will be re-energized with Nick Foles in there. Uh, all of his weapons, all those wide receivers, etc. I... I like the Bears, and I think they're going to win the game outright. Yeah, I think I do too. Um, you get a home dog catching points. I, I know home field advantage isn't the same right now, but uh, I, I don't know that I believe in this Colts team, and I think this Bears defense is going to play a lot better. They finally have somebody that they can get behind and rally behind on offense. They finally have somebody who they believe can carry the weight of the offense and not put all the burden on them, which is going to give them a little bit more freedom to pin their ears back, play a little bit more aggressive on defense. Um, while I like the Colts team a lot, I actually I still like them a whole lot. I like Frank Wright, what they're doing. Listen, this offense is very much a run-heavy offense. Now, they're a run-heavy offense because the offensive line is, is exceptional. It's great. It's the best in the league. I, I want to see this offensive line against this Bears front seven. I want to see can Khalil Mack, can, can Roquan Smith get off of these guys and, and make some plays and stuff the run and, and make Phillip beat them. Because I'll tell you this, if you put the ball in Phil's hands, he's not beating you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I think uh... – I think that Bears defense, if they're able to get any kind of pressure whatsoever, we're going to see interception fill again. Yep, I uh, agree. Birdie said, uh, just do it on camera, Gary. Who cares? No, I had to move my dog. My, my dog has started uh, uh, deciding to sit under my desk, and it, it really gets in my way. Joseph Gomez said, if Foles didn't lead the team back, where would the number really be? I like it a whole lot better if it was plus four. Uh, I like it at any number plus right now because I think the Bears are going to win the game. Yeah, you know. So at yeah. that point, it's fine. I would love it at plus four because that means the money line would be bigger. But well, yeah, and a hundred percent. That's that is true. I mean, if they don't come back and win that game, then yeah, this line is easily two points the other way. Yeah, Terry said, uh, "Damn well should be the end for Mitch." Yeah, well, I think everybody kind of thought that beforehand. Like, do you think? Do you think Mitch really won that job coming out of camp, or nope. or did I they? Think Ryan, I think I think it was a close enough race to where Ryan Pace said, "I'm I'm attached to this guy," so so. I, his success is my success. If 
Foles doesn't come in and overwhelmingly win the the, the battle, then Mitch gets it. Uh, Damien said uh, Pagano is the worst defensive coordinator. I wish he wasn't in Chicago. I don't think they've been that bad. I may have been wrong. Uh, he, they, they haven't been great on defense, but like I said, that, that the defense has all the pressure in the world because they just can't consistently score. Yeah, no, you're right about that. All right, moving on, Jacksonville at Cincinnati. And I know most of you are thinking, eh, th- these teams have a combined one win between them. But I think this is going to be a super interesting game. And Chris thinks it will be insanely exciting. You got Gardner Minshew on one side. You got Joe Burrow on the other side. I think it should be a hell of a lot of fun. Cincinnati minus three is the line. I, I'm rolling Bengals here. I think they I they got so close to that win last week. I think they could taste it, right? The Jaguars have I, already gotten their win. I, I love it. I man, absolutely love it. I, I don't I hate that they opened up the favorite. I hate that they opened up the favorite. Uh I, I thought this game should be a pick'em. I love both of these teams. I love both these quarterbacks, let's say that. And I do think this is gonna be an exciting game. I think it's gonna be a fun game. I don't think either one of these defenses are great. The Bengals offense is pretty putrid. But they are getting there, man. They're getting close. They, they, are, they are so close, I can taste it. But for them to open up minus three against the Bengals, I, I don't know that they should be a, a three-point favorite over anybody outside of one of those New York teams. I mean, maybe you're right. I, that scares me. I that just, scares I, me a little. I think the Bengals are going to win the game. And if it's a field goal, then I push. Um so I feel good about it. I think Burrow's going to get his first win this week. I think this, I is, it. this is one of those teams that they should be able to match up well with. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, the Jaguars' defense is is not out of this world. Nope. And and their secondary is not great. I mean, Fitzmagic I, was able to throw all over them. I think Burrow will be able to do the same thing. Well, yeah. No, and they're so, going to throw. I mean, they're I, I think they're leading the NFL in pass attempts. I don't know that that's – I'm almost – actually, I'm almost – positive that they have in the NFL pass stems. Yeah. And and it th- I don't think they're letting up. I don't think they're changing their game plan. Yeah. No, uh, no, you're you're right. Uh Bertie said uh Mitch owns the Lions. That's why. True story. Uh Joseph Gomez said Patriots five and zero against undefeated teams since twenty ten. I feel dirty now. <laughs> we'll get to that game. No worries. Joseph, we getting there. We and getting there. Bertie said, agreed, Chris, the fact that it should be a pick 'em uh Jags are the right bet. I'm not betting it. So oh, I'm not I'm not betting against Joseph. I'm just not doing it. You're not going to toss the Jags in your round, Robin? No. No, <laughs> sir, I am not. Not <laughs> this one. Not this week. I'll, I'll give that money up. All right, here's one that I guarantee will be in your round, Robin, and that is the – hey, what, what was your pick on this one, by the way? Well, I, 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 I'm, give me the bangles. Give me All the right. bangles. Going bangles. I'm laying the points. I don't like it. I'm laying the points. And you got uh, you got bears on uh, on the other one, right? Got bears on the other one. Are got we bears. the same on everything so far? Uh, you had Jets on Thursday night, right? No, 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 I have the oh no, I have the Broncos on Thursday. Okay, well then in that case, I didn't make a pick, but I'll I'll have the Broncos on right. Thursday night. Broncos on Thursday night. All right, uh, so I'll go ahead. I won't, and even, but we, I won't even bet fake money on the Jets. We so, are no. we are going Browns at the Cowboys. The Cowboys are a four and a half point favorite as it sits right now. Um, Cowboys. Looked okay against Seattle, but here's the deal. Neither one of those teams, Seattle or the Cowboys, have a defense. I mean, that game... The Cowboys did not look okay, Gary. That's a false statement from somebody who didn't watch the game. He, they look, had fumbles. Back. They, had slop, they were sloppy. <laughs> Zeke Elliott's supposed to be their best player, and he was the worst player on the field yes. the entire time he was on the field. We, we talked about that on Monday. Like, here's the deal. They, they were able to keep it within a score of Seattle, and I think... A lot of people, I guess maybe it was talent alone, or was it just offense? I mean, what was, how how were they able to keep in that game? I, 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 the Seattle played just a lot. Seattle made dumb mistakes. And and I wonder if that's, uh, <laughs> Bertie said, if Chark plays, please rethink this, Gary. Look, it's not one of my official picks uh, as far as the Jaguars go. Yeah, no, we're on. just, we pick these big games, but that's not a play. We'll give you our, our plays later. Yes, we'll give you the plays. Uh, Terry said he loves Burrow. He can't bet against him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Birdie said we bet the Browns plus three or plus five. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the majority of the the spots have the Browns as a four and a half point dog. There are. Yeah, I, say, I haven't five. seen five anywhere. Have you seen so, five? I there was a five earlier uh, earlier today. Uh, well, a couple of them, but uh, there's a five at my bookie right now. Okay, so, all right, it's five yeah, out a, there. There's a few, but it, it uh, pretty much across the board. It's four and a half. Look. I don't care. I'm taking the Browns here. 
I think this is going to be a close game. I think that the Browns can stay. I think the Browns can win the game. Like this the is a hundred percent. Right now, should be zero and three. Yes, yes, they should. This is my Super Bowl pick. They have they have a win gifted to them by the shit-tastic Dan Quinn and the Falcons. Yeah, I I think the Browns are the only way to go. Like, can you can you? Bet. I, I'm not bet. Listen, I can't safely think the Cowboys are going to win any game at all. I think the Falcons are one of the worst four or five teams in the league, and they dominated the Cowboys for 70% of that game. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Like, complete domination. So, no, this Cowboys team plays sloppier than any team in the league. Any t- they look like the Browns from last year. You remember yes. I said this year I thought the Cardinals were the Browns. They stink like the Browns last year. No, no, no. It's the Cowboys. It was the Cowboys. All that hype? Yes. Change the coach? Nope. New coach? Tank this thing, baby. Uh, they a disaster. Terry said, uh, love when them boys lose. Don't forget to tell your Cowboys fans, happy Cowboys Day every August 8th for every year's record of 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't. I, I don't know. If we get an eight and eight this year. Yeah, we may not. If they do, if they do, it'll be because their division is just rough. Yeah. Um, Joseph Gomez, Cowboy money will roll in eventually, but not sure the line will move, which says a lot. Uh, Damian said, NFC East is the toilet division. Uh, that's a hundred percent true. I don't know that there's a single team in that division that deserves to be in the playoffs. Uh, but hey, we we still got plenty of time. It's only week four. Uh, Birdie said, uh, "Let's see. Get these games at opening. We got the Bills over forty nine and a half. Now it's fifty two and a half." You got to hit these games Ooh. early for value. Uh, Birdie said they do win at home, though. Yeah, the Cowboys do win at home, and I'm with you. And if I lose this one, then I lose it, and I'm perfectly fine That's with right. that. But I, I do not feel comfortable uh, betting the Cowboys as a as a favorite of any yeah, more all. than three, at, really. Yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Anything more than a field goal, I just don't trust them. Not saying they can't do it. I just can't. I just can't bet it. If, if there's a defense in the NFL that I would feel comfortable would look uh, would would make Baker Mayfield look good. I I think it's this one. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's the problem. I don't know if they're going to make Baker look good. They're just going to make these running backs look great. Yeah. I, that's a that's a really massive point, which in turn I saw, I saw a stat. I got a I got to hook up with my buddy from 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 Cleveland, uh Dave, and and we got to have an honest talk about the future of Baker. I heard a stat today from the Ringer Fantasy Show. They said that the Browns have thrown the ball less than every team in the league this year except for the Jets. And Baker still leads all quarterbacks in interceptions thrown with a clean pocket, which all signs point to that being because he doesn't know how to read defenses. Because if you have a clean pocket, it's not anything other than it's either you're inaccurate, which he's not inaccurate, or he doesn't know how to read the defense, and so he, he makes mistakes worth throwing the football. My question long-term for the Browns are is if you know he has these flaws, so now the way they're passing the ball is bootleg out, one read options. So he every play call that he throws the football, it's called in the huddle who's getting the ball. There are no drop back, read, find the open guy, hit him. It's you're throwing to number 13. You're throwing to 30. You're throwing to this. You're throwing that. And this is where they're going to be. There is no reading a defense. My question is this, at some point in time in the front office, can you sign him long-term? Because we're getting close to making the decision. Year three of, are you picking up his fifth-year option? Are you giving him a long-term extension? What kind of money, what what kind of bet are we getting into with a guy that can't read defenses? I, I have to assume that at some point, uh, they will move to Case Keenum if that is true. Right, well, there's just no way you that you continue can win. to win. If you can continue to win, it's fine. My my issue is is do you move on from him or do you do no, you, you go? You have to, like, I because so. I don't think they can continue to win. This this is like not that. one of those situations where you can learn to read defenses if you haven't been able to figure it out yet. He just he's just been able to do it with such great talent around him at college in Oklahoma, and then also when he's gotten here, he's had elite talent around him, and and you can gimmick an offense up for him, but at some point in time, man, I you got to be able to pick people. You got to be a surgeon. Oh, a hundred percent. Like this is what they've got coming up. They they got the Cowboys this week. They Easy. host the Colts next week. They, that's a tough defense. They play at the Steelers. 
In That's a weeks. hard defense. They play at the Bengals the week after that. That's an easy defense. And then you've got the Raiders coming to town and the Texans coming to town. So those are two easy defenses there. So he's going to have some opportunities to look good. My issue is, is even if he looks good, if he's only looking good because they're hiding his flaws, you can't pay a guy that you're hiding those flaws. Right now he's on a rookie deal. That's amazing. I'll take all the flaws you got. That just comes with the territory. At some point in time, we got to start paying him. Joseph Gomez said forcing the ball to Odell is a bad sign. Uh, Birdie said the game is too fast for him. If he would spend more time watching film instead of doing commercials, he would get better. Uh, Emperor of Rome said the Browns without Baker is an easy 10-win playoff team. Birdie said how good would Cam Newton look in that offense? Oh, oh my God. Just ridiculous. Uh, just and, made it move. And Matt said uh, <laughs> Baker better save some money from the commercials he's in. And then Emperor of Rome said imagine Minshew on the Browns. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different options here. And instead, you get yeah. a number one pick that can't read a defense. They can't read a defense. Oh, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. That's a. I mean, that's a problem. And I and I just I want to talk to some real hardcore Browns guys and see: Are you open to understanding that this is an issue, or are you just Brown covered glasses? And he's until he loses, we don't care because that can't be what you have. I mean. I don't know. I, I, that's how you I, stay mediocre forever. Yes, I know we've talked about the Browns way too long. That's hundred percent how you stay medi- uh, mediocre. You're you're right about that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and move on. That uh, oh you you took Browns though, right? Oh hell yeah. Okay. New Orleans is a four point favorite at Detroit, and you know one and two not a good look for the Saints. They've lost a game at home. Now that was to a, a apparently really good Packers team. And they lost on the road to the Las Vegas Raiders, and uh, and they won at home against Tampa Bay. So they've played, you know, three at least decent teams, right? I think two pretty good teams. They beat one, they lost to another, and I don't think the Raiders are pretty good. I think they're okay. Uh, so they lost on the road at the Raiders, and now they get to go on the road against a Detroit team that is pretty fired up after getting their first win. They're getting some help back at cornerback. Uh, it looks like Matt Stafford is looking good again. Birdie said, we bet New Orleans minus four. Uh, that's the way that I'm going with this. I'm going with the Saints. I think that, that Kamara and all those guys realize, hey, we are about to let this thing get away from us. I'm curious about the chemistry on the team. I, I don't know what to make it, it, it. That Something just looks off with this team. I still think they're good enough to win and cover at Detroit, but I something's weird about this team. And I don't know if it's because, you know, Drew Bledsoe, uh, Drew, Bledsoe, uh, Drew Brees is, uh, is getting older if that's the only thing wrong, or if it's something more than that. Like, I understand Michael Thomas has been out. He should be back this week, apparently. Uh, you know, I will see. Uh, what, what are your thoughts here? I, I think this Lions team might go on a run. Okay. So you're I'm going to take Lions the Lions and the points. I, know, I might be foolish. It might be foolish to think that the Saints are going to go, you know, lose three games in a row. Even if they don't lose, they got to cover. Uh, I just... I don't, tr- I'm not trusting Breeze. I'm just not. He doesn't look, my problem is not his age. He doesn't look good. And their offense doesn't scare anybody. Alvin Kamara put that team on his back and he did everything for them. And they weren't close to being in that game. They really weren't. McKinnon said, as much as I appreciate the Saints, even being a Falcons fan, I'm worried about them this year from what I've seen so far. Unfortunately, I think the Lions are starting to figure things out. I think they're going to pull out the W. Yeah. Well, that defense looked really good against Tom Brady and the Bucks week one, and that offense just didn't look like it was all together there. And I'm going to tell you, man, ever since they've played everybody other than Tom Brady, that that defense hasn't looked good at all. They've gotten gashed by a lot of people. I think they play this Bucks team again. I think this Bucks team beats the hell out of them. It, this is not just a a Drew Brees problem, an offensive problem. This is also that defense isn't stopping anybody either. Yeah, no, you're you're right. You're right. I'm. Birdie said Brees is not the problem. You can't take a hundred yards a game on PIs and win. Yeah, I mean it's maybe that's it. Like I, I'll say this. Like I still don't think Brees looks good. Like no, it, he doesn't. But he didn't look good in the win against the Bucks. Yeah, he had looked good all year. Their defense was unbelievable. He has not played a game where he looked competent at yeah. all. Yeah, it's been it's been that's bad. a problem. Yeah, no, you're you're dead on about that. You are dead on about it. All right, let's move into the afternoon slate. Um, 
So we're not going to talk about Pittsburgh and the Titans. If they end up playing on Monday night, we will talk about it on Monday show. If they play Tuesday, we'll talk about it on Monday show. You know, whatever. We'll figure that out when we get there. But the COVID issues have wiped them out from Sunday. Uh, the Titans aren't supposed to be back into their facility until Saturday. So you give them one practice day on Sunday, and then maybe they come back and play Monday? I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, but we are going to talk about... Two afternoon games, and then we'll talk about the Sunday night game, even though it looks like it might be a bit of a dud. New England is going to Kansas City, and I know that you are fired up about this. As Joseph jumped out and said earlier, Patriots 5-0 and straight up against undefeated teams since 2010. They have a way of handling these. Now, they don't have the same guy that was there for years and years. That whole decade was Tom Brady, but they still got Bill Belichick. And now they got they get, Cam Newton. They're getting a hell of a player back that Cam hadn't really got to play with much, and that's James White. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're uh, you're I, right I'm, about that. I'm, I'm excited to see James step on this field. Uh, let me jump into these comments right quick. Uh, Damien said, Breeze is getting his karma for opening his mouth during the offseason. Uh, come on, man. Uh, Joseph said, uh, there are levels to these NFL. I don't think the Lions are near a second-tier team. Ooh, man, that's a strong statement. Birdie said, you're so lucky, Chris. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, I don't know what about. I don't remember I don't know what, what we said. I mean, I, I feel like you can't have a face like this without being lucky, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> Birdie said, we bet New England plus seven. Uh, that is my, that's my spot here. I'm taking the Pats plus seven. I think it's too many points. I think short week for the Chiefs. You're going up against a really good defense in the Pats. Even though they lost so many guys in the offseason, we've been over this time and time again and blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think the Pats play a lot off of emotion in particular spots, right? Otherwise, like, they are maybe the most fundamentally sound team in the NFL every single year, and this year's really no different. So, I, The best I, way to play defense is to not play defense. That's true. I think they'll be able to run the football. They are going, yep. they're going to dink and dunk, and they're going to stay in bounds, and they're going to run out of bounds, and, and they are going to – this Chiefs defense has done a great job against wide receivers. Well, guess what? Now they got to do a great job against running backs because they're going to throw it to Burkhead. They're going to throw it to White. They're going to run the ball. Damian Harris is supposed to be back. They, they're going to hit him with seven different running backs and the biggest, baddest running back of them all in Cameron, and it's just going to be matriculate the ball down the field. Bill Belichick is going to run his Naval Academy dream pistol offense it's all he wants to do is is just run the football down people's throats win the game in in an hour and a half and 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 go home that's it that's all he wants to do yeah hey by the way birdie said uh you were lucky for not talking pittsburgh today oh <laughs> he, he was he was gonna let you have it them boys <laughs> they've beaten they've beaten nobody this is a long season brother i am on your side with the pats when i we get, when we get there I really yeah. think that uh, now. Don't get me wrong. Like I think I, they can win the game. I think they can. I didn't say they will. I think they can win I, the game. And I think that seven is just a touch too much. Birdie said this is a letdown spot for the Chiefs. Yeah, that game against yes. the Ravens meant a lot for them because I think it was they felt it was a sign of disrespect. One that they were uh, underdogs in the game. Two that Lamar won MVP last year. You know all these different things. Everybody's trying to create this. You know Lamar Jackson Pat Mahomes rivalry. And instead, he came out and just completely dominated the ball game. I don't think you're going to see the same. Like, the way that you are able to control Patrick Mahomes is you're able to get pressure with four down linemen. You don't bring blitzes. That The Pats have not brought blitzes against him. That's when they've been able to win the games against him. So, I, I think... The Pats have a game plan to be able to stop him, and it doesn't matter if it's Tom Brady or Cam Newton playing. They find ways to win games like this. I don't know that they're going to win. I think they will keep it within the seven. I think this is a close game. Um, and this is, I mean, this is must-see TV, man. Must-see TV. Yeah. And this is definitely in a round-robin game. Because oh, yeah. Because it's going to have a really nice money line on it. Let's, uh, let's talk about Buffalo and Las Vegas. The Raiders. They are a uh, three-point underdog at home to the Bills. The Bills have opened up undefeated. And uh, and I like the Bills. I like the Bills a lot. I don't know that this Raiders team is set up to be able to stop this team. We've said it multiple times already uh, this year, this season, whatever you want to call it. I think Josh Allen is getting to the point where they are able to win games because of him and, and not just in spite of him, right? The offense yep. has looked good at times. They are explosive enough 
to be able to pull games out of the hat, right? They lost it, and then they got it back again against the Rams last week at home. I think they survived that game, and now they're going on the road to the Raiders. I think their defense will be able to slow down Josh Jacobs and and Carr in that bunch. I, I think the Bills are set up to be able to beat teams like the Raiders. I think you're going to see a ton of offense here. Um, and that over where uh, he said it jumped from 49.5 up to 52.5, I think it might go over that. Like I think you're going to see a lot of points, most of them coming from the Bills. And the fact it's only a three-point line, like it, Bills still not getting the same amount of respect for a team that is as good as they are, I think. So I'm, yep. I'm rolling Bills on this. Yep, I agree. I'm rolling Bills. <laughs> I love it. I love it when we get to that point. It's like, hey, Gary just said everything that I need to say on this. Uh, let's talk about the Sunday night game. And I don't know that we need to spend a whole lot of time on it, but uh, San Francisco, seven-point favorite at home. Even though we don't know if Jimmy G's playing, they're saying that he might, maybe, I don't know. Greg Kittle's going to be back, though. Uh, and the Eagles are a complete dumpster fire. And they don't have a lot of guys coming back yet. And I'm just, you know, uh, Damian Estrada, by the way, said uh, Bills win by 16. Uh, Joseph Gomez said rush forward, double-team Kelsey and Hill, then let somebody else beat you. Will Clyde be the difference? Yeah, who knows? Maybe. Uh, Birdie said, we bet Bills minus two and a half in the over 49 and a half. Yeah, you got the opening lines. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco, even with Nick Mullins in, it still put up 36 uh, points last week. You know, they, basically every running back is out, and they just keep churning dudes out, right? McKinnon maybe might be playing. I, we'll see. I mean, he's questionable for the game. But even if he doesn't, they still got other dudes. And the way that that offense is set up, that – zone running, whatever it is that they do, it doesn't matter who's back there. Like, they will be able to put up points, and whether it's Mullins or Garoppolo, it doesn't matter. They're still able to put up points. The biggest question that I've got is what is the defense going to look like because they lost Solomon Thomas. They lost, uh, or sorry, Solomon Hill. I have that right. Do I have that switched in my head? What is that? Nick Bosa and, and Solomon. I don't know. I think it's now something. you're asking me if I'm not prepared for. I can't remember. Uh, uh, Joseph Gomez said, uh, Sanders still game time decision, glute hamstring injury. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. Uh, I still like San Francisco in this spot. Even missing guys, I think they've got the better coach. I think they've got the better quarterback, regardless of who it is. At seven points may seem like a lot. I'm still riding 49ers here. I, I just, this Eagles team is trash, man. I'm worried that eventually all the injuries are going to catch up. There is a part of me that thinks that Nick Mullins could end up playing this game and outplay Carson Wentz by a lot. Yeah. By a whole lot. Look, I was right. It's all money. Thomas. I, I made a lot of money betting against the Eagles so far. I think I've done it every week. Yeah. I don't think the Eagles have covered a line yet. I'm, I'm going to just keep riding this one till, till, till she bucks me. There we go. Joseph Gomez said, yes, Solomon Thomas. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm betting against the Eagles until uh, yeah, until she bucks me, you know, and we'll see. And maybe it's crawling up to seven so much. Because, I mean, it opened at three and a half, and it's all the way up to seven. So I still don't think it's enough. Like, I just, I, I don't care about the injuries. I don't care about whatever. I think I've got the better coach. I think, uh, I think San Francisco is just the significantly better team, even with a bunch of injuries. So if, if you gave me San Francisco's, second string against the Eagles' second string, I still think that the second string quarterback at San Francisco is playing better than Carson Wentz right now. Yeah, I agree with that. So, um, let's move into the Monday night game, and then we're going to give our picks out, and we will get out of everybody's hair. The Monday night game is the Green Bay Packers hosting the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let you start us off with this. I don't think this game is going to be close. I think this is going to be almost unwatchable unless you just load up on a bunch of Packers um, for daily fantasy and you want to see Aaron Rodgers add to his stats for MVP. That's that's where I, I am. don't respect this Falcons team at all. I, I just don't. Neither do I. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. Watch Atlanta beat Green Bay Monday night. It seems like every time Dan is on the hot seat, he pulls some BS win against a considerably better team. Uh, Birdie... Took the Falcons at plus seven and a half, and that is one of his official bets. Uh, let's see. Damien said Peterson is one game from losing his job. Um, Peterson, who? I don't think that. Doug Peterson. Oh, I don't think oh, that. He oh, just won a he's Super back Bowl. to the Eagles. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, hey, that's he just not won happening. a Super Bowl. That's yeah. not happening. Nope, that's not happening. They'll uh, they'll they'll remove Carson Wentz before they do that. So they'll give yeah. him a shot with Jalen Hurts or or whoever, and and then they'll try and figure out something else. Uh, especially because they've got so many injuries, they'll just blame it on the injuries. But uh, but as far as the Falcons, Green Bay go, I I I think at some point. There's only so many of those rabbits that you can pull out of a hat, like McKinnon's talking about, where you beat some considerably. Because last year it was the game against the Saints, right? Where where they just destroy the Saints 27-9 in New Orleans. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see that happening in week four this year. I think at some point this team is just done. Like, I think they're just done with this coach. I think they, they just don't look excited to be playing. They have got so many offensive yes. weapons. And they look like they have pieces on defense. They look like they do, and that unit is so non-cohesive whatsoever. I just, Birdie likes them plus the seven and a half. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to carve this team up. This is the revenge tour for Aaron Rodgers. He, where we talked about last year, where it wasn't a whole lot of uh, throwing the football, et cetera, they have completely switched this around. LaFleur has, he and Aaron Rodgers sat down before the season. So I heard him talking on McAfee about this, and they they threw out all the plays that neither one of them liked, and and they sat down and they just had a powwow with just those two, and they said, "All right, here are the here are the plays that I really like," and they got super creative with some stuff, and and Aaron Rodgers is now at the point where he is creating receivers, like it, we thought that they had no skill talent aside from Adams. They got a lot there. They got guys that can run deep. They got guys that are fast. And you never saw it last year because they tried to run the football all the time, et cetera. And, and Aaron Jones is an absolute stud at the running back position. I am all over Green Bay in this game. I love them at the minus seven. Um, and actually, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah most, most spots you can still get them at minus seven. So Heritage, uh, Bookmaker, uh, GT bets, uh, intertops, yeah, it's still web, seven, it's, it's still, still seven, seven in a lot, lot of places. Now there's there's some seven and a half. I don't think the seven and a half will be close. I really like the Packers to win this by double digits. I don't think it's a close ball game. Maybe I'm wrong. Completely agree. Yep, completely uh, agree. Young Ganji jumps in. Oh yeah, Gary's on the spot. Rogers kills these guys. Play uh, play the first half, and that might be the smarter play, like because I think they might kill them early in in. But even still, that's still only like a touchdown. They're not taking their foot off the gas. Is the NFL man? Uh, let's see. Birdie said they've had 20, uh, let's see, point leads their last two games. We get caught up in the result. Don't look at the whole. Green Bay won a very big game against New Orleans. They will look by the Falcons in this spot, in my opinion. Hey, maybe you're right. I've been wrong a lot in these spots. But, man, I love the Packers here. I am rolling with them. And and you ain't talking me off of this one, Birdie. I know you should have talked me off of the, Raiders, or the, the Ravens win last week, but you ain't talking me off the Packers. I'm all in on this on Monday night. All right. With that said, 